Hey everyone, Tom here from Blueprint Prep, coming at you with some facts about the LSAT Flex. It used to be that the LSAT had five sections and you would take it in person. There were two logical reasoning sections, one reading comp section, one logic game section, and one experimental section. That could be any of those three types and was unscored. Now, you can take the LSAT from home in something called the LSAT Flex. Instead of five sections, you're only taking three. One logical reasoning, one reading comp, and one logic games. It's also changed the relative importance of the sections of the test. It used to be that the logical reasoning section was 50% of your score, and the remaining 50% was divided between logic games and reading comp. Now, they're all roughly a third. So, what does the LSAT look like now beyond just being relatively weighted less heavily toward logical reasoning? To take the LSAT Flex, you'll need to have a computer. This can be a laptop or a desktop, and it can run Windows or Macs. Sorry, Unix users. And you'll need a webcam. Most laptops have this built in, but if you've got a desktop, you'll need a webcam. If you don't have a computer of your own or don't have a webcam, you can request that from the LSAC. Just make sure you do so by the request deadline. There's gonna be a proctor to check you in who will look around to make sure that there's no one else in the room, that you don't have any materials out with notes on them. And then once you get checked in, you're gonna stay on webcam and then you'll take the three sections as normal. So as normal means that it's a 35 five minute section. Although for people with testing accommodations, your time might be higher. When you are taking the test, the LSAC will be recording you, both audio and video, to make sure you're not communicating with anyone else or doing anything else nefarious or improper. In addition to being recorded, they're also gonna monitor the things that you have on your desk. So you're gonna want a clean workstation, and what you're allowed to have with you is scratch paper, five sheets of paper. It can be unlined, lined, or graph paper. You can have a pencil or pen, a sort of regular pencil or mechanical doesn't matter, an eraser as long as it doesn't have a sleeve, a highlighter, a pencil sharpener. You can have a watch, but it can't be a digital watch. You'll need an analog watch. That's the one with the hands that go around in a circle. Super old school. You can have tissues and you are allowed to have earplugs, but they need to be foam earplugs and the proctors in the past have had you squeeze them to show that there's nothing in them. You're also allowed to have a drink with you in a water bottle or a juice box. No aluminum cans though. You're also going to need a photo ID, driver's license, passport, something else, but it needs to be government issued. So your school ID will not cut it for this. As part of quality and ethics control, the LSAT is gonna be monitoring what you do during the test. So most importantly, it means you're not allowed to read aloud. They don't want you communicating with anyone else. You can't leave your seat. You can't go off camera. You can't run any prohibited software items or connect an external storage device to your computer. You are allowed to have your cell phone in the room with you when you take the test. In fact, you're going to use it during the check-in process. However, once you're done checking in, you'll need to turn it off and put it away. Any other electronic devices other than the computer that you're using to take the test are not allowed. You're not allowed to have a backpack or, or a briefcase or anything else with you, nor are you allowed to wear a hood or sunglasses or anything like that. If you have a uh, religious headgear, you are allowed to wear that, but that's the one exception. So this is an important test, and a lot of us worry about what happens if my internet goes out or if someone enters the room or anything else. If that happens, you're going to be fine. Your test will be paused if your internet connection interrupts, and then it will pick up right back where you left off. You don't have to restart the section. It'll come in at the same time as when there was an issue. If there are multiple issues, the LSAT might flag your test for review, but there have been very few reports of internet outages or anything else affecting people. As far as someone coming into your room, I don't know about you all, but when I was studying for this test, it was literally all I talked about. So on the day that I would be taking the test, everyone knew about it. So if you've got roommates or family or anything else, have something on your door that's like, yo, I'm taking this test, get out of here. You are allowed to have an animal in the room with you. So if your dog is a comfort to you or your gerbil is a comfort to you, great. Just make sure that you are prepared for your attention to be divided if that's the case. Now let's talk about the writing section. You only need to do it once. So if you've already done it in the past, you're golden. If you haven't done it yet, you've got a year from your test date to complete it. But the LSAC is not going to release your score until you've completed the writing section. And they tend to release scores about three weeks after test day. So put it on your calendar that that's something you wanna take care of in that time period. 
We get a lot of questions about how to prepare for the LSAT flex. The short answer is prepare the same way you would for the regular LSAT. The couple differences are that you might want to emphasize logical reasoning slightly less, and you don't need to do extensive long time to practice to get you ready for a five section test. Now, between a three section test and a four section test, it's pretty much a wash. The benefit of a practice test is that it gives you experience with timed work, and it gives you a snapshot of your current abilities so you know what to work on next based on your current areas of weakness. Both of those things will hold true regardless of whether you're taking a three section practice test or a four section practice test. Should you decide to take a three section test, you'll need a score calculator to convert your raw score on that three section test into a comparable one for the four graded sections on a normal test so you can see how that translates to the 120 to 180 scale. Otherwise, you can just take a four section test and treat it as really similar to what you would see on the actual test. And the main value is, again, seeing what you need to work on right now and just getting practice doing the material. A lot of people wonder, is the material on the LSAT Flex the same as it is on other tests? And the short answer is yes. Most of the LSAT Flex exams that have been administered so far are actually past exams that were either undisclosed or were alternate exams. So not only is it theoretically the same material, it's like literally the same tests that people have taken before. And the score weighting is done the same way so that there's the same distribution of people on the 120 to 180 bell curve as there would be on any other test. Okay, that's all from me. I hope this answered some of your questions about the flex. If you've got anything else you're wondering about, go ahead and ask in the comments and we will link to those resources I talked about as well as guidance from the LSAC itself so you can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. All right, I'm out of here. Take care.